Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. COVID-19 cases are coming down, which experts say is obviously largely due to vaccinations. But uh, here today to discuss how can we keep cases down and lower them even more, uh, and in particular, how can we uh, keep schools open uh, in the province is Ryan Imgrund, who is a COVID-19 biostatistician. Uh, let's start, Ryan, with schools. Uh, we saw last year's schools in the province of Ontario closed for 26 weeks. Uh, so how has this school year gone so far uh, in your view? And uh, do you think that the government has provided enough support uh, to schools to make sure that uh, they can stay open uh, right up until the end of the year? Yeah, that's a fantastic question, Wyatt. And I think that's something which everyone wants to know. How can we keep schools open here in Ontario. What we don't want is another repeat of what we saw last year when we lost so many learning days to hybrid learning or to simply learning where we had students fully online. We don't want that. And I think one of the things which we need to keep in mind is that there are things that we're able to do in order to keep schools open. Um, some of those precautions have been taken and it's why generally right now in Ontario, we are seeing school cases lower now in October than they were even in September. Um, we're starting to now like isolate students properly. So once we find an actual case at the school, um, we're sending that class home. I would still like to see more testing being done. We do have a rapid testing system here in Ontario where we are encouraging people that they should be getting rapid tested, but we don't have it rolled out that, what I'd like to see is that in any school that has one case, send home all the kids with a rapid test and if you want to stay at school, you need to be rapid tested. What we don't want is to see schools that are having 15, 20, 25 cases, because then the whole entire school has to shut. And that's a lot of lost learning time. When we look at other measures, obviously, in the Ontario legislature, there's been lots of action on this as well with uh, political parties and MPPs and ministers uh, talking about uh, different issues. But I want to ask you specifically about um, uh, smaller class sizes. Obviously, that's something that uh, some parties in the House of Commons feel uh, are necessary. So what kind of an impact would uh, reducing class sizes actually have? Would it have as big of an impact as some of the opposition parties are talking about? Yeah, that's a very good question. I think smaller class sizes would have a huge impact, but I do honestly think now is not the right time to be advocating for smaller classes for this school year. What we may want to start to do is that in January, February, when we start to allot our budget for next school year, once we get into these whole election year campaigns, we may then want to start to advocate for smaller class sizes for next year. Unfortunately, what happens is that we have schools set up right now. Um, we're not going to have a big influx of money into these schools to enable us to have smaller class sizes. Would smaller class sizes work? Absolutely they would. If anything, you could have 100 students in let's say grade seven. And what you could do is you could have four classes instead of just three classes. And what that means is that if one class gets COVID-19, you're only isolating like 25 students versus 33 students. So it would definitely keep people safer. Um, but I, honestly do feel now is not the right time to be advocating for smaller class sizes. There's certainly other things which we could be asking for, which would definitely keep staff and students a lot safer inside of our schools. And um, obviously Pfizer has uh, requested approval to administer the vaccine in children ages 5 to 11. And obviously uh, vaccinations are, are what many people uh, say will uh, get us out of this pandemic. But um, what is the data showing for how much cases could actually go down when we approve the vaccine for this age demographic? Yeah, it's going to be absolutely huge. Right now here in Ontario, we are seeing roughly 80% of the school cases are in elementary students. In other words, of every five cases that we see in schools, four are in elementary schools. If we were able to vaccinate that five to 11 population, we could probably stop a great deal of those cases. My guess is what we would see here in Ontario, school cases would probably drop by about 60% um, if we were able to vaccinate that five to 11 population, because right now our school cases are being like, driven a lot by students in elementary schools. And it's primarily because they're not able to be vaccinated at this time. You mentioned it a little bit, but how big of an impact are, are the amount of cases that are in schools having on whether or not we can exit uh, the province's uh, reopening uh, framework with stage one, stage two, and uh, stage three, so just how big of an impact would it have? 
Yeah, it's having a huge impact. And that's one of the reasons that I've been advocating for safer schools is because it's not just that school cases are in a school and they stay in a school. What happens is that we see school cases transmitted from one student to the next, and they're then going to bring that home to their families. What else happens is that when we have cases inside of schools, we also need their families quarantining as well. We need parents taking time off of work. And when they're taking time off of work and they're in a household for a long period of time with someone who may have COVID-19, even if they are vaccinated, it's possible to pass it to them. They go back to work, they go out shopping, they can then pass it on to other people as well. And that's certainly something which we don't want. So what we would like to see um, is to see cases down in schools, not because COVID-19 is the most dangerous thing for the younger population, but there is long COVID and there is also the chance that they can pass it through to individuals who are fully vaccinated. You mentioned that there's um, a, about COVID and how there's uh, other diseases right now that are spreading. So um, I actually just got a notification that uh, uh, Minister Elliott will be holding a media uh, availability tomorrow uh, regarding the flu immunization campaign. So um, how big of an impact do you think the flu season will uh, have this year? And do you think that could affect COVID cases at all? It's going to have a huge impact. In fact, I think we're already seeing cold season is having a really big impact right now. Here in Ontario, we have a positivity rate of around 2%. What does that mean? It means roughly that of every 50 people we test for COVID-19, only one actually has it. So the other 49 people we're actually testing have symptoms that are indicative of other things, such as a cold, a flu, something else going on. And what, and you know, so I think it's super important that we get people vaccinated for the flu, um, that, you know, we do whatever we can, even just simply washing our hands so that we can keep colds out of the school as well. Because if we can keep these other diseases out of the school, it's good because we can keep students there because they're not going to fail the screening because the screening does not just check for COVID. It checks for coughs. It checks for chills. It checks for things that could easily indicate flus or colds or other things. What about uh, hybrid learning? Like, let's say, let's say uh, tomorrow hybrid learning was no longer an option for uh, students in the province. Would that uh, allow COVID cases to go up because there's uh, more, there, there would be more children in schools? Uh, and, and then would the, obviously, you know, students staying at home uh, has a negative impact on their uh, mental health. So in your view, would the cases going up uh, slightly be worth it to have the kids back in the classroom? That's an awesome question. And I think that's one of the things with hybrid learning, why we have hybrid learning here in Ontario. And really what hybrid learning is, for those that may not be familiar with it, it's when a teacher has to teach students that are in class and online at the same time. Now, what they've seen from an educational perspective, it's not beneficial for students. It's not beneficial for educators, but what it does allow is that if there was a class of 30, let's say, there may only be 20 students attending in class because another 10 are online. So it allows you to achieve the benefits of smaller class sizes, but you do sacrifice some of the educational benefits when you have hybrid learning. So you may be able to bring down cases, but it has educational impacts um, when we have hybrid learning. Now I'll uh, ask you about um, the Christmas break, because obviously last year we saw that was when uh, schools closed and many experts said it was obviously due to uh, people gathering at Christmas time, even though it, it wasn't permitted. Uh, so is there anything that we learned from last year's school closures and having to uh, close schools after Christmas break that can be uh, learned to make sure that it doesn't happen again after this Christmas break? Yeah, well, I'm certainly hoping that we're able to vaccinate that 5 to 11 population in time for Christmas. Even if we got one shot into that 5 to 11 population, that would be fantastic. If we're not able to, what I'm hoping we're able to do is we can send home rapid testing kits with students uh, because we don't want to say, you know what, you don't, we don't want you gathering over the, the Christmas break. There's ways to do it safely. Vaccines would be the number one way, but if we don't have vaccines, I'd like to see rapid testing kits rolled out because we inevitably know whenever we have long weekends, whenever we have really big gatherings like that, if we have a lot of school cases, we then see you know students with their family move from one area to the next. What happens is that the like, cases that may be small in one area, once you start to visit other areas that have more cases, you're gonna see more cases transmitted. 
The other thing too, which we also saw is with shopping malls. Um, last year too, I think it was like Peel and also like Toronto um, had their shopping malls closed around halfway through November. Well, what that meant is that individuals in those areas would travel to other areas in order to go shopping. And what we found is that the cases in the surrounding areas, they upticked as well. And that's always what we see is that we see a balancing of those cases, which is okay if cases are low, but if cases are high, it's definitely not. And um, I'll ask you one final question surrounding Halloween, obviously uh, not, not too far away. Um, the Chief Medical Officer of Health has uh, released his uh, advice and his guidance, um, but what would be your recommendation for Halloween? Do you think uh, it's safe for kids to go door to door? Um, because obviously having interaction with a lot of people and maybe just provide some, uh, some tips or echo some of the tips that the Chief Medical Officer put out. For sure. So I think what we sh should note is that when it comes to the actual case count right now here in Ontario, it's fairly decent. Um, we've seen a decline in cases week over week. We are sitting with very, very nice numbers right now. And when you have low numbers, it's tough to transmit COVID, which isn't actually there. With that being said, Halloween is typically in, in outdoor activity. It's also an activity that you're outdoors, you're at someone's house, and you're not there for a very long period of time. So if you if you stay outdoors, if you keep your interactions short, Halloween is a very, very safe outdoor activity. What you want to avoid is maybe going to a bunch of people's houses indoors afterwards and then eating without a mask on for a long period of time. So it's more the Halloween festivities, like trick-or-treating itself. I see no worries with that at all. All right, Ryan. Well, uh, that was my final question. And so thanks again for joining me. And uh, yeah, thanks again. And thank you so much, Wyatt. Take it easy. Bye. See ya.